Hi, this presentation was created by Monique Owens and Paolo Valvich. It will discuss classroom management theory created by Fred Jones. This first quote clearly describes the importance of having a good management plan so that the teaching and learning process in our classroom of our students will occur without major behavioral problems. For teaching to be enjoyable, you must be able to simply relax and teach. Classroom management must be built from the ground up so that most problems do not occur. Here is a link which provides a variety of strategies Frederick Jones uses in his class and recommends to other teachers to, be, to use in their class. The first skill cluster, classroom structure and to discourage misbehavior. Very first step is a room arrangement. But it's important to realize that we are the architects of the learning process and it all starts with our classroom setup. What he stresses is that a room needs to be set up in a way that, it, that makes learning the center of the tension and eliminates any kind of a misbehavior. The second part is that grade manage, part of the grade management strategy is consistency and how class starts, how class continues, and also being extremely pos positive. If the students do know what's coming up, their behavior will be much more positive, much more relaxed. If they're kind of anxious, things will be a little bit more difficult. And the last strategy he uses is it's called the class jobs. If we assign a specific jobs to the students, they'll be so engaged and they'll be trying so much more in those and if they're going to be engaged in doing those uh, assignments uh, they'll be less likely to uh, participate in any kind of a improper behavior skill cluster two limiting limit uh, setting through body language jones is um, describing the teacher's body language playing a crucial role in preventing misbehavior of students. Uh, the teacher, the way teacher carries himself or control of class or management problem indirectly. Simply controlling breathing, posture, and making eye contact can often stop bad situation without stopping teaching. The way how we are in our classroom, we the way how we carry ourselves, students do see that. And it can positively or negatively influence their behavior. And that's very important to realize that. In the skill cluster three, he is describing the strategy say, see, and do teaching when he starts explaining the students what he would like them to do. All right, he tells them what to do. The second step is going to be he shows them. He shows examples. He demonstrates what needs to be done, what, the, what is the task. And the last part is the students are going to be putting their own input. They are going to be doing the thing that he showed them to do. And therefore, this is the learning the idea of learning by doing and again such a strong engagement in in activity will eliminate impro possible property and be behavior uh, skill cluster four uh, he talks about responsibility training through incentive system incentives for him are very big um, and he's talking about the students receive reward of doing preferred activity after completing a certain task Technically, what he's saying that teachers should be implementing an incentive system and employing a negative reinforcement method in which reward follows a good behavior. It's a preferred activity time. If students are doing the right thing, they are going to be rewarded. He also kind of uses the idea of the grandmother's rule. Um, and he's saying, when you have done what I have asked you to do, then you are free to do what you want to do. And he's again stressing on a positive uh, reinforcement, the positive, positive contact with the students and they are going to be acting, um, reacting to it much more, uh, much more effectively and they are going to be more, more likely to uh, complete their task with a positive reinforcement and positive incentives at the end. In Skill Cluster 5, um, what he's talking about is providing efficient help to individual students and he recognizes that it's very important to focus on individual students, but also on the other side, he recognizes that we have to be pretty, pretty efficient, you know, with such large numbers of students in our classroom. Uh, the teacher shouldn't, shouldn't be spending that much time on any one students that 
we should be the ones who guide them. We give them the steps, we show them we are positive and they are going to be the ones who are going to be uh, progressing their learning on their own. And the next part is many times can seem very ins insignificant, but placement of a student within our classroom can really determine the success or the failure of a student. Um, you know, everybody's different and everybody has spe certain needs and uh, kind of accommodation possibly. But if we place students in a wrong spot in a classroom, uh, it can really hurt his learning and also it can propel his misbehavior. So therefore, classroom seating, he sees as a very crucial part of uh, classroom management strategy.